All right, welcome everybody and good morning. Hope you all had a great holiday. Um, hope you all had a, um, enjoyed the, the last couple of weeks or uh, for with whatever holiday you celebrate. Um, and then I hope you have a happy New Year's today. Um, so a little transparently, I am not feeling great this morning. I woke up, did my no normal morning workout. Here, let me check my technology really quick just to make sure it's all working uh, fine. Last, yep. Okay, it is working just fine. Um, so yeah, I woke up this morning, did my normal morning workout, and I got a little bit of a headache. So we might keep the stream a little bit shorter today, and I think that's okay because I don't have a ton of content prepped. Uh, I mostly wanted to talk about things at a conceptual level with this project, but um, uh oh, and by the way, I do have both. So I'm streaming to both LinkedIn and YouTube at the same time, and I've got my chat windows open here. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop a question in the chat here, and I'll I'll get to that as soon as possible. Okay, so today we are starting a new project, and, and so this new project is kind of a cool one. Um, so the context around it is um, so you know naturally I work for State Farm, um, and I volunteer through State Farm with a STEM program um, that. Or like so State Farm organizes a STEM program that I volunteer through where so what it does is is um, so a group of students will go through four years of high school um, uh, and throughout the four years they'll can they like do computer science studies and then at the end of that this program because so actually I'm I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself so this uh, this program is in partnership with a local community college and so whenever they uh, successfully complete the program I believe they also graduate high school with an associate's degree in computer science which is really cool it's a really cool program um, I've been doing it so I started with the freshman class my guys are now juniors about to enter the second semester of their juniors it, it's uh, it's shocking to see how like how fast time has gone by like but the, the great group of students like great group of uh, guys and gals um, uh, so yeah so what they're now focusing on is their their teacher gave them an assignment of like uh, that they're basically gonna be working on for this entire next year like literally this whole calendar year even through halfway through their senior year and that is um, so they are uh, what is the assignment so they were so basically they were set, uh, told okay Try to think of a project that would help benefit the school in some way. And the idea is, you know, State Farm, you want to be a good neighbor, so you want to, let's be a good neighbor to our school. And so um, the, the, so there are four different groups that in, in the particular school that I'm working with, uh, and they all came up with different ideas. And so one idea that um, the students had uh, that I'm helping them with, this particular group with, is um, so they have, I guess, some bad traffic congestion as they come out of their school's parking lot. Um, and so they were hoping to use computer vision in some capacity to analyze, not necessarily parking lot capacity, but like how long it takes to get out of the parking lot. And so and the, the way they likened this was um, that, uh, like, I guess with their school buses, there there's like TV monitors around their school that will let you know, like, because uh, like not all I guess not all the buses can get out at once so they'll say okay this bus is going to depart at this time uh, and it's going to take this long to get out of the parking lot or something like that I, I'm, I'm obviously butchering it um, so th basically they want to do the same thing for cars and, and that is through an app or, or some sort like let's say you're parked in like the back row of uh, of like um, like the parking lot like how long is it going to take me to get out of the parking lot and, and the reason they say this is because you know the student and i said okay what, what what sort of value would this provide the students they said well we, we just won't even go out to our cars if we know it's just going to be congested we'll just hang out in school a little bit longer and i, I think that makes sense um so i did uh you know i we did talk through the logistics of like difficulty with actually implementing a project like this and in, in the sense of you know so using a um, computer vision like this uh, you're going to have a camera uh, you're, you're going to need some sort of camera that's looking at the parking lot all the time. So obviously that means in the installation of a camera and access to that camera. Um, and so like I, I was transparent with him and said like I don't know if the school is going to fly with this necessarily. Um, but I talked to their teacher about it and their teacher is still uh, you know okay with the idea of them learning at a smaller scale even if it doesn't necessarily manifest into something real. Um, because, you know, at the, at the end of the day, these students are going gradu to graduate, go on to bigger, better things, um, and uh, at least they will have this new skill under the tool belt, or this new tool under their belt. 
you can tell, like, I am just not feeling it today. I'm sorry, folks. Okay, so with this project, you, and you can kind of see what I'm doing over here. So uh, what I am doing is, uh, and you can see I got a new little extension for my desk over here. Um, and, and so you can't really see it, and I, I can't move this camera, so let, I, let me just show my screen because uh, I took a picture. So this is a picture of this desk that's over here. Uh, and so you can kind of see what I did here is basically simulating what I'm trying to do with model cars and tape. So actually, fun fact, uh, this this is actually, this tape that is on my desk here is like electrical tape um, that I found on Amazon. Like it, like they actually sell it in uh, uh, this narrow of strips. Um, and they may have more colors because I don't know why I selected orange. Like I thought, I thought, I guess for some reason I thought the orange would be more yellowy, but it's a very orangey orange. So maybe there is an actual yellow, but that's okay. I think we should, this should still work for our project. Um, and uh, so you can see that, and then you can see on the back there with that uh, the little funky tripod there, I have a webcam set up, and you can't really tell, but that cord coming out of the webcam in the back there is being routed back into my computer. Um, so I actually have two webcams hooked up to my computer right now. I have the webcam over here that's actually analyzing my, my uh, model parking lot, and then of course my webcam that I'm using for the live stream here. Okay, so let's talk about um, like what we're, we're necessarily doing with this project. So, so just a little transparency here. I am new to computer vision. Um, I understand computer vision well enough from a conceptual level, um, that I can talk about that pretty well. But as far as, uh, like actual manifestation of, um, something in the code is, this is new to me. Uh, and, and that's part of the reason I've selected this group. Um, so actually, uh, the way the, this group the, the group divvying out worked. So there's four of us mentors and four groups. Um, they they did like a Shark Tank pitch to each of us. And the second I heard this group talk about computer vision, I was like, this is going to be a win-win for both of us because I don't really know computer vision and they want somebody to help with. And so it's going to be good for me to learn and, and then I can help them in return. So it's a win-win and win all around. Um, and, and so, yeah, uh, I am... You know, even though I've taken a ton of different like nano degrees and stuff, uh, I have not taken the computer vision nano degree. Um, and so this is going to be my first foray into a new skill just kind of off the cuff. But, you know, I, so it's interesting, though. Uh, I, I have a friend, Dr. Raj Ramesh. Uh, Raj, if you're watching, hello. Uh, he posted a great little YouTube short the other day of this idea of like, if you really want to learn a new skill, uh, consider like a good project or, and I, Raj, I apologize if I'm butchering this, uh, uh, like, like, uh, oh my gosh, my brain is just all sorts of fuzzy right now. Um, uh, what was that? So, okay. I'm talking about Raj in his short. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he was talking about you, you want to find a good project and you want to kind of work your way backwards to figure something out. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. Uh, a little bit. Um, so just to show you, Again, the demo station, where's my demo station at? Uh, just me with the demo station. Sorry, something's wrong here. Hold on. Sorry about this. Um, sometimes when I restart my computer, it doesn't, like this software that I'm using for streaming doesn't like recognize that. Okay, there we go. Now I'm back. All right, so now I got my, my demo station set up over here so you can see that you can, uh, like I got my hand over here and moving these cars around. Um, and so I got these toy, little toy cars here. Uh, so fun fact, both of these are Teslas. Um, I, uh, so I, I've wanted a Tesla ever since like they came out like 10 years ago. Um, and so whenever, whenever they announced the model three, a couple of years ago, I told my wife, I really, really want to save up money, money to get one. And so she told me she was going to get me a Tesla for my birthday a couple of years ago. And she did, and it was this model car. <laughs> so it was a funny little joke. Uh, but just this last year, I did finally save up enough money, and I did get my own Model 3, so I, I was really happy about that. And so actually, my car is blue, and so I got my own little blue car. But the reason that I'm kind of glad she, she, we got the white car, because the white car shows up much better against this black background over here, as opposed to the blue car. Um, so yeah. All right, so let's talk about um, uh, just like a computer vision at a conceptual level. And maybe, mm, I'm trying to think of the best way to kind of 
show this. So let me let me see if there's like a screenshot or something uh, that I can demonstrate well in here. Okay, so computer vision. Uh, well, let's just do this. All right, images. Is there any good images in here? Okay, this is a pretty good image right here. All right, let's focus on this image right here. So you can see in this image that um, that there that somebody has trained a model here to recognize uh, different objects in this image. Uh, and, and so you can see here that like the, the the purple pink boxes represent people. You can see this person's carrying a handbag. There's a traffic light, trucks, cars. Uh, whatnot. And so you might be wondering, how does a computer necessarily do this? Do you have to have a fancy camera or anything? So that, because that was the, the one question my guys had, uh, my high school guys is, do we have to buy some sort of fancy camera? And the answer is no. And the reason for that is, is because uh, the way the computer vision works is, uh, and, and I'm sure, you know, there probably is are cameras that have like special depth sensors. Well, actually there are, I, I know actually in, in the modern iPhones, like the the face ID is not just computer vision, uh, but rather it actually project like projects a dot uh, like a dot matrix on your face. And the reason that they're not just using computer vision is because if you did that, then you could hold up a picture, an image of a picture of like me or somebody, and fake it out. Whereas this dot projector is doing like a like a three D kind of mapping of the face, and then uh, being able to detect to detect it that way. So it's really hard to fake out. Uh, face ID on these iPhones. Anyway, sorry, I digress there. Um, but with a general um, kind of, here, <clears throat> with, a, with a general computer vision algorithm kind of like this, what it's doing is really just looking at the pixel values. So if you think about like this computer here, or even the whatever, whatever you're watching on right now, um, you know, everything rendered on your screen is just a bunch of different pixels. So, you know, if you think about your TV, you know, uh, it's been really popular in the last couple of years to get a 4K TV, uh, 8K is on the horizon, um, but basically, uh, or, and, and it's been 1080p for a long time, like it was the, like the least gold standard, but we, we keep getting better and better, and, it, and <clears throat> what those numbers really mean, and I'm not, not going to really talk about those numbers specifically, is like, okay, that this is the, the resolution of your screen, how many pixels are on the screen. And so there are a ton of pixels on a screen. I'm, I'm curious, what is the, the pixel count on an iPhone? So pixel count on iPhone 12 Pro Max, that's my phone, last generations. Okay, so the, how many pixels are there, are there on an iPhone? So it looks like the max resolution is uh, 1284 by 2078. So whatever, just multiply those numbers together and that's what how many pixels are on the screen? So a lot <laughs> to say, and the and the way so the way these computers then work is that like uh, it will uh, basically tell a pixel okay because a pixel lights up with three different color values. There's a red color channel, a green color channel, blue color channel, so RGB, and so it's ba and so then you can represent this image here. Or, or, or whatever you're looking at in in the form of numbers, uh, a, a lot of numbers, clearly. And then you can do mathematical calculations to find patterns amongst those numbers um, for, um, sorry, I just got a little distracted. I got a bot on my YouTube stream um, trying to spam me. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, so we'll, and so, gosh, I am really fuzzy today. I am sorry, folks. Let me take another drink here. Okay, so um, the okay, so back to the pixel value counts. So basically, we want to what the these deep learning algorithms do, and so what deep learning means as opposed to machine learning. Deep learning is really just a more mathematically intense version of machine learning, uh, and, and the reason um, I'm trying, I've, I've got. I've got so much stuff in my head. I'm not sure how to like communicate this the best. Uh, but the like, so let's start back. Let's step back for a second. So the way machine learning and our, all artificial intelligence works, regardless of a, being computer vision, natural language processing, or general machine learning, it's all math. Uh, it's all really fancy math going on behind the scenes. And so um, 
a couple months ago, I don't, or, or a year or two ago, I I don't remember where I heard this, but it stuck with me, and and that is this idea of math is really just the science of finding patterns, um, and, and and you know that probably doesn't make sense if you just think of like general counting, like things like that. Although there are patterns with that too, like you can find a pattern of, you know, are we spending too much? Are we spending too little? But when it comes to like machine learning, that's what this all is, is we are just looking for patterns amongst data. So in general machine learning, like our movie grading project, we are looking at structured data, looking at these features to see, is there a pattern amongst these features that's going to be a predictor of the movie rating? And so in the same case with computer vision, the idea is, is there a pattern amongst these pixel count values, excuse me, that represent something? And so with deep learning specifically, uh, that is a lot of mathematical computations because you can imagine, you know, an image like this here, just looking at the cityscape, uh, the pixel count. So you'd have to have a computer that could comb through every single one of these little pixels here and find patterns. Um, and so that is a, you know, this couldn't have been done a couple of decades ago because the, our, our computers just couldn't do it then. But, you know, techno technology's come a long way. And so, yeah, now we can do it even here with just my basic Mac Mini here. Um, and and I, I actually haven't gotten this working with a Raspberry. I do have a Raspberry Pi, and I'm curious to see if this will work with a Raspberry Pi um, because that would be really cool. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Um, we're, we're taking baby steps with this stuff. Um, so, yeah, let's talk a little bit about convolutional neural networks. I actually think I wrote a blog post about this once for one of my classes. Um, let me see if I can find it, because I had a good a couple images in there. All right, so what was that project's name? Uh, no, it wasn't that. Dog breed classifier? Maybe it was the dog breed classifier project. Okay, um, all right, so there's a blog post here. Okay. All right. So, um, are the images still good? All right, so basically mo most deep learning, or maybe all deep learning, I don't really know. Hey, look, another reference to Dr. Raj. Um, Dr. Raj is very bright, and he, ha so in, in this uh, post here, I'm referencing a video of like understanding like the different kinds of uh, uh, artificial intelligence that are out there, and he's got like, I think the top YouTube video on this, and he it well deserved because it's a very well done video. It's it's five minutes, well worth watching. Um, so back to neural networks. Um, uh, like, so I was help. Okay, so the, here's here's what I wanted to see here, uh, and this is actually taking this is a GIF of uh, an explanation by the channel Three Blue One Brown. Uh, and I would actually recommend you go check that out. So he has a mini series on neural networks that explains the math behind how a neural network works. But basically, as you can see here with what, what this GIF is doing is, it is taking, a, so the 784 here represents the number of pixels. And it's basically saying, okay, each of these pixels is gonna represent a node. And then as we move throughout the layers of this neural network, basically we're going to look for more and more patterns. And, and this GIF doesn't represent it super well. But when you think about like this number nine here that it's showing, uh, it is like a, as it goes through each of these layers, it will see, okay, maybe just like the like the first layer we'll see, okay, we see some curves here on the top of the nine or the straight part here on the nine. And as we keep going down the, the layers of the neural network, then it'll, it starts to form patterns of patterns. And so let me, let me think of a different demonstration. So, so looking at my little toy car here, my little toy car here, um, you, you, I know this is a car. You and I know this is a car. Uh, let me change my view here. You and I know this is a car because why? Um, it's got four wheels. Uh, it's got windows uh, on the sides. Uh, it's got a windshield. Uh, it's got car door. It's got four doors. You know, this is a sedan. Um, but, or even just talking about just the toy car itself, uh, it is metal. Uh, its molecular structure has plastic. I don't really, you know, I'm talking about stuff that I don't really understand. But the idea here is that even as humans, the way our brain works is that we recognize that this is a car because of all the the little patterns that comprise it. Comprise it. So it's we're basically building patterns on patterns on patterns on patterns. So you know, a wheel by itself is not much. Um, 
it, or it doesn't or it doesn't really describe a car a or the atoms that comprise this wheel don't really mean much but when you start to put them all together then our brains can recognize okay yes this is a car and so that's why we refer to these things as neural networks is because ner from a computational perspective then i'll switch back to my screen here now uh, from a computational perspective it works pretty similarly i don't want to now you know i think some people would argue to say that the brain is way more complex and i think that's we're we're, we're splitting hairs there as far as like you know uh what am i trying to say we're splitting hairs here like like in, in the terms of like i think it's fine to call them neural networks you know i think it is a little bit naive to say that this these are akin to the brain um but you know maybe we'll find out more in the future as science continues to evolve but anyway so that's basically what uh, a neural network is and so there's different kinds of neural networks and i don't want to cover these too much but like the primary one that um, is used for something like computer vision is something called a convolutional neural network. Oh, this is a really cool GIF. All right, so what this, what a convolutional neural network does is it recognizes the fact that, you know, we have an image that has all these pixel counts and trying to do all these mathematical computations on a computer, if you just keep going throughout the neural network and just keep things at a raw level, it is... It's, it's too computationally complex. And so what a convolutional neural network does is it look it kind of generalizes things a little bit here. So you can see here that it's moving across the pixel counts here and it's creating this convolved feature and you can see that it's actually got less dimensions here then. Um, and I don't know if the, what I'm talking about here necessarily interests you. I, th I find it really interesting. So, okay, here's another really good uh, uh, image. Um, so you can see here with this combinational neural network and then it's it, like it like as things flow throughout here you can see that we like continue continually uh, comb throughout the image to look for patterns and then at the end of the at the end of it you can recognize what it is, it is here so you can see the output of predictions uh one percent chance it's a dog uh four percent chance it's a cat 94 percent chance it is a boat and obviously this is a boat Okay, so I've done a lot of talking about things at a conceptual level. Um, so what do I want to do next? Do I want to go ahead and jump into the code? So um, back to the idea that Raj was sharing of like um, just trying to figure things out like on your own. I decided to kind of just take something from a starting perspective, just taking something that somebody's already come up with and see if I could enable it myself, which I have successfully done. Uh, and so credit to this person here, um, uh, Mr. Surya Morali. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, he has his own Git repo here. It is a very handy little Git repo. And you can see he's got a nice little GIF that um, um, he's got enabled here. I, I, I don't think he necessarily trained this model himself, but he's implemented it well enough that I was able to emulate it. Uh, and, and so this is a great starting point in terms of um, now I have things to think about as I move forward because you know this is a great little implementation but there's limitations to it and you'll and we'll talk about those limitations here in a minute. Okay, so um, what what he's using uh, behind the scenes here is uh, a a Python library called uh, OpenCV, CV standing for Computer Vision. And then he's got a couple of other uh, little packages here. So uh, actually this IM utils here, uh, he didn't create this. This is a, another package created by somebody else, but basically it's a like a repackaging of some of these open CV things to make it a little simpler to work with. Uh, and so if you wanna follow along, I would recommend that you check out this Git repo. Um, uh, I'll, I'll link it in my own readme for, uh, but at, so keep in mind, this is just our starting point. Uh, I'm not actually going to end up using this code because it's uh, not going to be, well, you'll see why. It's just not going to work for our project. And, not, and, this, and this is not to say he didn't do a good job. It's just, well, <laughs> you'll just see. It's just not a good fit for us. Um, but but it, it was a great thought starter for sure. Um, and so basically what it, he's doing here is he's using a model trained by, I think this mobile net SSD was trained by Google. Uh, oh, and so that, that's another thing I wanted to talk about uh, is um, like how these models are necessarily trained. So these models are trained by, um, you know, we Google probably has hundreds of thousands of images and is able to label the images um, somehow. Like, I don't know. 
I, I, I guess they would have manually labeled these. But basically what they would have done is, um, you know, coming back to, I don't know, let's look at our computer vision again. Computer vision. Okay, so let's look at like this picture again. So whenever you want to go and train a model like this, uh, you have to have uh, what they call, well, I guess you don't necessarily have to have the image labeled itself. I think you just have to have, like, you don't have to have, like, a bounding box like this. Uh, oh, by the way, that's what these are called. These these uh, these boxes around these these people are called referred to as bounding boxes. Um, but basically, um, like, so the way these models are trained is you have labeled images that uh, the computer will, con so you, you tell the computer, okay, I have this image and this is an image of a person, or this is an image of a car. And then the, the model is trained to recognize that and then thus uh, adjust the the parameter, or not the parameters, but like the, uh, what is the word I'm trying to look for? Like the nodes of the neural network. I, I know that's not right, but it's it, it's a, gosh, what is that word? It's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't even think of it. But um, uh, so it's basically adjusting, like the, basically adjusting the neural network to actually be fruitful for something or, or recognizing that it is a traffic light. And so an, an interesting thing about that, um, kind of a funny thing, well, not really funny, but like ironic funny, is um, I read a study once that people were trying to uh, use computer vision to better analyze, oh, something just happened. Oh, my, my computer just went into light mode. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Anyway, so some researchers were trying to study skin cancer uh, and use computer vision by looking at like things like moles. I wonder if I can actually find that. So computer vision, uh, skin cancer. Uh, uh, because I want to find just an image here. Uh, okay, so here here's a couple. Well. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I want to show this too much because this can kind of get, this can be, okay, I'm not going to show this too much because this can be hard to stomach for some people. But anyway, the idea was is that they were, they wanted to use computer vision to detect like uh, like if uh, different skin, th images of skin looked like it could be cancerous. And one of the models ended up being an ultimate failure because um the, mo the the images that they fed into the model, the ones that actually did represent skin cancer, uh, had a thing, like somebody pointing, like literally somebody using their finger to point at the image uh, in the picture. So that was a skewed error because of course you're gonna recognize, like, so basically the model was looking for a finger <laughs> instead of a, like, a, um, instead of a, instead of the cancer itself, so. Uh, yeah. Okay, so what do I want to go back to? All right, so, um, yeah, so that that's the way these models are trained. So we're actually not going to train our own model, and, and for a couple reasons. Number one is I don't have the labeled image, label images, and I don't need them. Uh, well, that, oh, yeah, that's number two. So number two, number one, I don't have the labeled images. Number two, we already have models that are trained out there. Number three, you need really specialized hardware because, you know, um, and this is the this is the other reason that kind of like so I obviously don't have like these specialized GPUs in my house. In fact, I don't even think these newer Apple Silicon Macs can work with GPUs yet. Um, but oh man, I am just all sorts of fuzzy today. Um, but and even from a cloud perspective, it freaks me out kind of to try to train something on there because I'm afraid of how expensive it can get. I've read horror stories of people getting like ten thousand dollar bills uh, by trying to train these own models. And so here's another funny or not funny, but like an interesting idea is that um, uh, because the they the, these are specialized hardware and they consume so much electricity. Um, it, Deep learning's got a little bit of a bad rap from the environment community in the sense that like it is kind of polluting the environment a little bit in the sense that like these machines are 
running so strongly to produce these deep learning models. So it's actually not very environmentally friendly to try to train a legitimate model. So that's why this gentleman here is using this MobileNet SSD for well, probably for the same reasons that I am. Is he? I, I would imagine that he, you know, mo no common citizen is going to have the right hardware. Like, he, like I said, this this model is trained by Google. Um, and, and then other big companies like that. So, um, yeah. And then there's also this idea of transfer learning. And so what transfer learning is, and that's what I actually did here as part of this project, is you basically have a model that is trained all the way up to like maybe this point right here. And then if you wanted to actually use it to for a more specific purpose, then you maybe would chop off like this last layer here and replace it with your own. So that way, then you don't have to retrain all of this part here, you only have to retrain on just this part. So that is a lot more um, environmentally conscientious and things like that. I thought I heard somebody. Sorry, I thought I heard my daughters coming down. Um, and so that's what I did with this project here. Uh, actually, so I, I did this project in tangent with Udacity and Udacity did have GPUs. And so part of the project was is uh, you, you you train the neural network yourself, um, which it fared very poorly. And then you did it again with transfer learning and it did a lot better. And so it was actually a really fun kind of project, but um, oh, this GIF no longer exists. Uh, but, oh my gosh, I forgot about this. So one of the, the things of the project was, because this is a dog breed classifier, and they asked you to put images of humans in just to see what would happen for the fun of it. And so when I put in, so these are my daughters. Um, they're, oh my gosh, I can't believe how little they are here. Oh, this makes me sad a little bit. Um, because, so I think they're like one and two here. They're now four and five. They're so sweet. Um, but anyway, so my daughter Emma here was recognized as a Chinese crested dog, uh, and my little daughter Elena uh, was predicted as a Great Dane, and then I put in Snoop Dogg for the fun of it, <laughs> and Snoop Dogg was recognized as an English Toy Spaniel. Um, so for, all right, so back to what you all came here for, and that is this project here. So um, instead of just copying and pasting like all of his code in here, because uh, there's a lot of notes, and I uh, there's a lot of notes in here. So what this model can do is it can recognize all these different classes of things here. Actually, uh, let's jump into my own code here. So what I did here is basically I took out, because this, this can get a little bit wordy. Like I'm trying to see here, how many lines is this code? 201 lines. Whereas I just I just peeled it out and got like the, the bit, like just the beats of it basically. And so you can see here that this model, this, this mobile net SSD has been trained to recognize all these different classes here. Um, and yeah, so we've got air, airplanes. I don't know, I, I couldn't get it to recognize what a background was, but my daughters and I had some fun with this. And actually, let's go ahead and start this model up. So I've already written this. Um, I This is out on my personal GitHub if you would like to run it. Um, just note that the one thing I, w I would have you know is, so in this video stream, SRC here equals two represents um, the camera. So I actually have uh, three cameras associated to my computer, um, two or one virtual and two actual ones. So that's why it says source two here. So you may have to change this to zero if you wanted to do it. But uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about this code here after we run it. But let's go ahead and run this because uh, this is what you all came here for, not my my long rambling <laughs> about like conceptual ideas. Sorry. All right. So let's go to iTerm. All right. Let's go to repos. Uh, CD, what is it called? CV parking lot project. And then I just called this, I just called this file test.py. So if I run this, uh, what is going to do? And hopefully it runs okay. Still starting up, takes a little bit. Okay, there we go. So you can see that it's it's printing out, um, I think this is just like the, the, the pixels here. So let, let me go ahead and blow this up for you. And let me do a screen share as well of my demo station. Okay, so you can see a couple things here. All right, so up in the top right of your screen right now, um, you can see the uh, the raw image as it is uh, being uh, pumped into the, this webcam right here. And then you can see down here that we actually have, or, or as part of the main screen, the actual model is running. So you can see that I have my car here and it was being recognized as a car for, there for a second. I don't know if you're gonna. Well, let me go ahead and shove this, or just do the 
the screen share and not the, the webcam share. So you can see, I don't know if you can tell this well, but this image that you're seeing right now is very low in resolution. And that's why it's having a difficult time detecting that this is a car. And it may be also that I have uh, uh, the, that's why I wanted my white car instead of the blue car because the white car shows up a little bit better against the background. So you can see here in real time that it is recognizing that this is a car with this level of certainty. Um, and so it, it, that's why that, that, this model is really interesting. So I got my potted plant over here. It will also recognize my potted plant. So if I stick my potted plant over here, you can see that it does a little bit better at recognizing a potted plant, but I think that's just because like this, uh, it, it, well, it's bigger. I actually have two potted plants in my house. By the way, this is fake. This is from Ikea. <laughs> so uh, if I look at this one as well, um, then so yeah, we can see the potted plant. And then my daughter's had fun. Uh, so we got my Mario Amiibo here. Um, so if I stick Mario in here, Mario was being recognized as a motorbike yesterday. Mario, are you going to be recognized as anything today? So you can see that this mall is running successfully. Um, but there are a couple problems with it. Um, and, and you can kind of see one of the problems right now. So one of the problems here with this model is, is it is recognizing my car as a chair right now. And I can't, I, I just struggle to get it to recognize as a car at all. And I think that's for two reasons. Number one, is that this model is more general, meaning that it's looking for a number of different classifications types instead of just cars. And then number two is the image quality is so low. Uh, and it's not that the, my camera is low, it's just, the, it, well, let's go ahead and talk about that. So let me go ahead and shut down this model for now. Um, shut down. Do, do, do. All right, so that is shut down now. All right, so let's come into the code here and let's let's analyze what, what things are doing here. So um, I call it, I, I like to break down my code into different sections. So I, I just call this the environment instantiation here. So basically, at the top here, uh, we have the different classes of the that the MobileNet SSD is trying to view. So again, all these classes that we could see, and we and we got to demonstrate a couple of those. So we got to see the potted plant, we got to see the car, and, and we got to see my fake chair. Excuse me. And then I'm loading in the actual model here. I am getting the stream from my camera here. And then I am starting the FPS timer here. So if you're not familiar with what FPS is, uh, FPS stands for frames per second. So again, uh, that is one thing I should have said is um, th this is so computationally complex because not only are we looking at, like, because basically what the computer is doing is it, it is, um, because we talked about just like a static image like this one here like this is just a static image here and that's what videos are in, in um like if you ever watch youtube or anything and or, or if, if you're a gamer like i'm a gamer uh, a lot of gamers prefer their games to run at 60 frames per second as opposed to 30 frames per second i think most films are shot in 24 frames per second uh and you can you can I'm, I can't, I'm not going to demonstrate this here naturally, but uh, basically the more frames you have in one second, the smoother the image looks. And that's why gamers really like a higher frame rate because then then it looks a lot smoother then. And so that's what FPS stands for, frames per second. And so that's what it's doing is it is going through every single frame in a second and it's calculating this thing um, over and over as new frames come along. And that's what the... Oh, I shut it down, didn't I? That's what these numbers here were representing uh, is all the different frames that it was looking at. Uh, like, so it was looking at, I don't know how many frames a second necessarily. Um, so anyway, it what? but all right. So we are getting the current frame from the stream and then we are resizing it. Um, and so in this scenario, I don't know. So this is where I, I need to, uh, you know, comb through this code a little bit more to kind of understand what it's doing. But you can see here, at least with the CV2.resize, is we are resizing whatever the pixel value of my webcam is from, from that down to 300 by 300 pixels. So that is why the resolution was so low. Um, and the reason for that is, is because, you know, if I kept it at this native uh, 1080p or whatever this camera is, is that I don't think my computer could run that. In fact, I let, I'm very interested to see what happens. Let's go ahead and change these values to uh, 1000. 1,000 by 1,000, and I probably should have just done a find all, but whatever. So let's change these to 1,000 by 1,000, uh, and let's keep going before I like uh, uh, 
or let's let's go through the code before I start up the, the camera again. Um, so you can see here that um, basically this this is going to stay alive and it's going to constantly go through these things here and then it's going to create the bounding boxes uh, appropriately with this code block here based off of what it thinks it sees and then it will show that appropriately on the frame. Ooh, what did I do there? Uh oh, I don't know what I did there. That was weird. Okay, and so that's what this is doing. Is it is it, is showing that on the screen? So, okay. So and then uh, for some reason this little code is not working, but that's fine. Um, I just do a control C and it stops it anyway. But that's basically what it's doing. Like it, so, it's not nearly as complex as you might think it is. Like well, I mean, obviously behind the scenes the math is really complex, and it can be computationally complex. But the writing the code is not too bad actually. And so um, here, so this is what, coming back to this the, the code here that I um, copied and why this isn't going to necessarily work for us is because as you recognized, um, it, it, it's just not recognizing my car swallow. So I'm going to see, I, I already did some Googling and found that there appears to be uh, models that are more accurate just for cars. Uh, whereas this one's just more general, but that's great, but that's fine uh, because this still is giving me a general idea of what I need to consider going forward. And so that is the uh, and so consideration number one is I need to find an app model that's more accurate toward cars, and then consideration number two is um, uh, like how like how is can I get a model to run. Uh, on my hardware. So I changed these values to a thousand by a thousand. So let's go ahead and run this again to see what happens. And uh, I don't know if you're gonna notice a difference by eye, by just eyeing it, but you should see an increase in resolution quality once I start this thing up again. So let's go ahead and start this guy up again. All right, it takes about a little minute to load up the model. Uh, huh, huh, huh. All right, here we go, it's loading it up. Okay, so the, the image quality, let me go ahead and make this full screen again. Um, so I don't know, I might even have to stop this because I'm afraid it's affecting my stream. Okay, I need to stop this. I need to stop. Stop. Okay, are you all still with me? Okay. I might even have to stop this because I'm afraid it's affecting my stream. Okay, so I had to stop that for a second because it was affecting the stream. So basically, as you saw there, it, it increasing it to a thousand by a thousand was helping it to recognize um, these cars a little bit better. But the problem is, is it's so computationally complex that it was bogging down my computer. Uh, and that's partially, and that's partially because I'm doing the live stream here and. The live stream here apparently takes a lot of computational resources on my computer. So that's challenge number two. Challenge number one, uh, find a better model, or not a better model, but one that's more relevant to our project. And then challenge number two is find one that will work also with the hardware that we're working with. And so, you know, naturally, and I already talked that I would like to get this running on a Raspberry Pi. If I'm struggling on my Mac Mini M1 with this model, there's n no way that's going to run on a Raspberry Pi then. Um, and yeah, I think I'm going to call it there for a day. Um, because, well, let, let's go ahead and run this model one more time just for the fun of it. Uh, now that I've, uh, turned down the resolution again. Um, oh, so the one, one last thing I want to show. And, and, and so this is challenge number three. So not only do I want to recognize that there are cars in the parking lot and, and uh, well, we'll ch oh, okay, so challenge number three is actually like, so I've got two cars here. It's not recognizing both cars at the same time, and I don't understand that. So I'm curious. Will it recognize two potted plants at the same time? Maybe this model is only set up to, well, this isn't going to work because my, my <laughs> those plants are so big. Uh, let me see. Oh, uh, how about two people? Because it was recognizing Link just fine. Uh, okay, so Link... Does it recognize Toady? Toad, does it recognize you? No, well, not really. How about you, Link? <laughs> this Link's a motorbike. Okay. Well, anyway, um, so let me let me see if I can put these two here side by side. Okay. So now it's recognizing him as a person, and him as a motorbike. Well, or, and it's kind of a dog. But basically what I'm saying here is it won't recognize, it, this model doesn't seem to re be able to recognize multiple 
objects at the same time at the same time. And maybe it's just because I don't have the code written right to do it. Uh, but so, because I've, I've got a parking lot full of cars here, I needed to recognize all, every single car here. So let me put my toys back. Put my toys back, sorry. Okay. Stay clean. I am very meticulous about staying clean and organized. I just enjoy being clean and organized. Okay, so, um, and then, so, uh, you can't really see with my face right there, can you? Um, let me change that a little bit. Okay, so you can see that right toward the bottom right of the screen, there's like a horizontal piece of orange tape. Well, actually, I can point to it right here. This piece of orange tape, this is kind of representing uh, somebody getting out of the parking lot. So the idea here also is, you know, not only do we want to recognize the car, but we want to recognize the car. Okay, let's say I'm parked in this back row right over here. How long does it take this car to get out of the parking lot? So we basically need the model to follow this car out of the parking lot this way. And I bought some fishing line to actually represent this. So that way my finger, because we talked about the finger issue already. Um, so how do I get it to recognize here? And then when it crosses the, this threshold, how long, do, how long of a time does that take? Uh, so that's basically what I'm gonna be trying to figure out with future live streams. Uh, but for right now, um, I hope you all learned something interesting. Well, let's go ahead and shut this. Uh, why is it a Kong? This a bottle now. Um, bottle, and I have a just a heck of a time getting to recognize it as a car. 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 No car. Well, it was, I think it was starting to do it, but I don't think you could see behind my face there. Let me move my face again. Move my face. Okay, so it is being recognized as a car, but with a very low. Um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Was it actually represent? Oh, wow. Okay. I was wrong. I was wrong. Apparently, the model can recognize two different objects of the same type at the same time. Uh, but if you notice, though, I have to have it in this very specific position because if I turn this car even just a little bit, it doesn't recognize it that well. Even now, like that blue car, you can see how low of a probability that it's referencing here. Uh, and so that's another cool thing about this piece of code here that this gentleman has written is, uh, here, let's go ahead and shut this down because I'm done with this for now. Uh, how do I shut it down? Control C. I'm afraid of actual accidentally closing out the stream. Um, why can't I shut this down? Oh, right. there we go. All right, shut down. Boom. All right, so back to this code here. Uh, he has a, I think there was a confidence interval somewhere in here. Um, I think that's what this, this no, no, that's not what, I, I saw it in here before. But basically, you could, oh, okay, it's right up here, duh. Uh, basically, it will only show anything that is a confidence level higher than 20%. So actually, let's go ahead and turn this up. Let's turn this up to uh, 0.8. So this is going to re represent 80% confidence. All right, so it, I, I have a feeling when I turn this up, it's not going to recognize my car at all because as you saw earlier, it was recognizing it, but just barely um, uh, with low low confidence. Okay, so you, you can see my car is back. It is not being recognized as a car right now. This one is not being recognized as a car. Um, oh, there we go. So you can see there, but it's gotta be in this such a specific position and, and that's not great. Like, especially if I want to have this whole parking lot full of little toy cars like this. Um, and, and I'm not gonna get, I guess I could find more toy cars, but I think this is gonna suffice for our project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie fishing line uh, to the car. That way, whenever I actually wanna simulate how long it takes to get out of a parking lot, then my, my you seeing my hand here is not gonna affect that because literally there's not like a, a big old hand in the real life moving these cars. So uh, more to come. I And so this is a learning journey that we are taking together. I, I am not as, you know, naturally I am, this is new to me, new to you. We're gonna learn it together. And I think we're gonna go ahead and call it there for a day. So I hope you all enjoyed this live stream. I hope you all found something interesting. I don't know if we, uh, the next live stream is gonna necessarily be a continuation of this because uh, as you can tell, I've got like three series going right now. So we have the Titanic series, which I've, it's been a couple weeks since, or a couple months now, oh my gosh. A couple months since we've done anything with that. Uh, then we also have the movie reading model, and I do need to finish that uh, because I was supposed to have that one done yesterday, and it's clearly not done. <laughs> because Well, the reason I, so uh, just to recap on that movie rating model, the movie rating model I created for, uh, like, as a funny thing for a podcast, and I told the podcast guys that I would ha have it done for our meetup that we did last night, 
and it, I clearly dropped the ball there. So we're doing another meetup again in a month, and so I hope hopefully I'll have the model done by then. Um, but yeah, hope you all enjoy that stream. Happy New Year. Thank you all for joining me in 2021. I hope we all have a great 2022 together as we continue to learn new things. So thank you all very much and have a great day. See y'all later. New Year. Thank you all for joining me in 2021. I hope we all have a great 2022 together as we continue to learn new things. So thank you all very much.